Hello Taurus. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoinche here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. Give me one second, guys. Let me just fix my, my mic. Okay. So the deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. Some of you might have been in a relationship already with this person. It could be a situationship, but it could also be simply that you've exchanged glances, but on many, many occasions. And there's something there. Energetically, you can feel it, but no one's speaking up. Those are also connections that are hidden. My goodness gracious me, Taurus, what's going on here? You've got love. Very nice. You got beauty, you got sensuality, you got love. Oh crap, I, t I spoke too soon. <laughs> then you have grief. Mm hmm. Then you have doubt. Well, it was going good while it lasted, right? It was going fine. <laughs> All right. This is, of course, your person of interest, but because of the intensity of these feelings, you could feel that this is yourself as well. So the roles could be reversed and some people, they mirror each other. So it could be that both of you feel this. So do take it as it resonates. Oh boy. We have sexuality too. This is a very, very intense connection. Taurus. Very intense indeed. We have here beauty followed by sensuality. After that, we have love. Then we have grief, doubt, crossroads, mothering. Then we have sexuality under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. The overall arching theme is not sexuality, sorry, it's play. That's a friendship card. This Connection is based on the foundation of a friendship. So here we also have two cards that are a bit on the dark side. Dark in the sense that it's just, it's just sad energy coming from this other person. It could be you as well. There's a lot of grief and there's doubt now in this connection. And there's a decision-making process with the crossroads. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Taurus, I see you as somebody who is just so absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. Not only on the outside, but I see what you're like on the inside. And I like what I see. There is a beauty that exists. Your charm, your character, your personality. Everything about you is very sweet, very gentle, very loving and caring. And there is a part of you that I see, that I feel that is very much connected to me and you make me see who I am. You make me see the true feelings. I do have these sensual feelings towards you. It is tantalizing, it is alluring and you can be so seductive even when you're not trying. It's hard to not think about you and your super hot body. Mm -hmm. This is not the only reason I love you, but I do love you. I am in love with you so deeply that I always want to be close to you. 
but now I grieve. I'm upset because I hurt you a while ago. And the way I've behaved, the way I reacted, my actions and inactions, they've caused problems in this connection. One of the major problems I have seen and I have faced here, I'm feeling the sense of guilt for what I did, for what I said, my actions. I also feel that in this connection, now there is sadness and melancholy coming from my side. There is regret and there is remorse. I do have doubts. Doubts about this connection. Where we are now, where we are headed, far into the future, many years before. What decision and what choice will be made? That is something that I am worried about. And I'm thinking, what do I want in life? Do I want you? Answer, absolutely yes, exclamation mark. Yes. I see you as someone who has unconditional love. You are somebody who is very nurturing, very caring, protecting. And the love that I have for you, I don't know why it exists, it's just there. The love I have for you is unconditional. I feel that this love is like a sacred love, it's pure love, it's true love. It's love from beyond. I do feel in this connection a sense of obsession even over your body. Yes, I have to admit I am addicted to you. It's very difficult for me to not think about you intimately because I have ah, such a wonderful time with you. And I fantasize about you, how wonderful it would be. You are so very sexy. Everything about you, the way you walk, your charm, touching you, feeling you, squeezing you. I want all that, but I am grieving because I believe that I have lost you now. I'm afraid that I lost you. Overall, I do want to be in a relationship that is based on friendship. Happiness, joy, prosperity, freedom. There's mischief in your eyes and I want to have fun. You make me want to live again. This is something that I have seen and witnessed and realized being in this connection with you. These are the things that I have gone through deep down in my heart that I don't share with you. Do I love you? No, it's not just that. Am I in love with you? Very much so. And it doesn't stop. All right, Taurus. I think out of all of the readings I've done, this, this like wins the prize. <laughs> this takes the prize home. A lot of good feelings here. Beautiful feelings. This is the, this is the type of reading you want where, you know, does this person want to marry me? Does this person want to move in with me? Can we be a couple together forever and ever? This is that feeling. Holy smokes. It is ever strong. It is so good. God bless you. Everybody needs this. Everybody needs love like this. And it's passionate. It's beautiful. You have the nurturing side. You have the actual love side. You have the physical side. You even have the friendship side. It's amazing. 
Let's just put it this way, Taurus. Keep doing what you are doing, okay? Don't change a thing. Because this person, this person does not want to lose you. Yes, there may have been a hiccup in this connection for now, that, that card that you have here, the grief card, but don't worry about it. That's simply a hiccup. Things will move forward in due time. All right. Let's have a look. <clears throat> is this is the lover's path tarot so here i'll be looking into hmm, the reason why the connection kind of stopped working what truly happened in this connection that was causing a problem in the first place wow this is a complete opposite before there was a lack of emotion guys that this person had, and now they can't stop thinking about you. Wow, is there ever a difference? So this is in the past. I'm just going to look in the past. Some of you may be wondering, why did this person do this to me in the first place? So this is why I look at this particular uh, deck, and I also read it in the reverse, for those of you who are new. So this Seven of Staffs does talk about being defensive, being combative, having a lot of struggle in the connection. With this type of situation we have here a sense of instability success is possible but only after dealing with difficult people or a situation that oppose your intentions be careful not to let their mess become yours this is what's suggested for this person so they did allow other people's issues and they took on other people's burdens and they may have not been able to concentrate on you or focus on you. Their energy was scattered. Here we also have feeling overwhelmed, being your own worst enemy and creating problems to distract from what's really going on. So here there's an issue of being overwhelmed and finally being their own worst enemy and creating problems meaning there might have been an argument for topic A, but they were being diverted and they're talking about topic K, for example. It's completely different. It's unrelated, but they're just making a big issue out of nothing. Why? Because they don't want to talk about your topic. They just want to distract you from what really is going on. That is when somebody just is trying to avoid because they're not, they're not good at conflict. They don't want conflict, so they're avoiding the situation However, still, that is absolutely wrong. That is not good. We have here the Ten of Cups. Let's have a look at that. The Ten of Cups here does talk about how there was a lack of closure, how there was a lack of feeling of fertility, how there was a lack of happiness, how one did not want to be part of a community anymore. There's a lack of satisfaction in the emotional life and there was a feeling of a lack of abundance. Here, a long time ago, there was deep emotional satisfaction. Then it kind of started to fade as time went by. There was a sense of endurance in the relationship. One of the problems was, was that there was a fear of expanding the family or friends or even being within the community itself. There's a fear of this, being enveloped by a community or people that you would have been very close to. You just weren't used to it or they weren't used to it. Here the reverse talks about dissatisfaction, though uncertain why. Everything looks perfect on the surface, but there is an inability to experience joy. So you may have given them everything in the beginning, yet they were still dissatisfied. And everything looked good on the surface. 
Everything looked perfect on paper. It looked perfect at parties. But still this person felt like they were empty on the inside. Why was that? Because of the Seven of Staffs. They were feeling very overwhelmed with many other problems and other things. However, now, Torres, is this the case? Nope. There's a complete, what is it called? 360, I think. I think it's 180 or 360. I'm not good with math, guys. You know that. <laughs> I'm good with other things. I'm good with law. I'm good with public policy. Making legislation for people. But math? Absolutely no, no. You guys know what I mean. Something completely changed in this person. And whatever has happened here, whew, it's completely different now. But it's a good difference because they've been there, done that. They've learned the lesson. And I mean, the type of cards that you have in the beginning, you can't get any better than that. That's the best. So the feelings and emotions that this person has now are extremely intense or extremely beautiful, extremely passionate, extremely loving. You can't get better than that. But before, things were really bad. Now, what they're feeling right now, for some of you, there may be a blockage. Maybe you're not talking. Just know that they do love you. In fact, they're in love with you. And sometimes when somebody falls in love with someone, it hurts so much that they can't be with them for whatever type of reasons. It hurts, even though they love you so much. Then there's various reasons why they can't reach out to you because of their own circumstances, internal, external factors. There's many reasons why people can't be with you. But does this person feel like you are their love and you're their life? Absolutely, yes. I hope this works out for all of you. For those of you that resonate with this, it's very beautiful. Just keep doing what you're doing, because whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> Don't change anything. All right. Here we have the Beginner's Tarot deck. So I'm looking into any actions, any intentions, any plans that this person might have towards you. Look at that. Okay. Four of Pentacles. Okay, this is really weird. So one came out this way and one came out this way. So got this. We have the Lovers. We do have the Two of Cups, but it was under the Lovers. So I'm cutting it away because I only read the top card. The top card has the most amount of energy. But you guys know there is the Two of Cups there. That does talk about reunion. It does talk about the intention. The intention is under the Lovers. So this person has a choice. And they do feel that you are someone that they could possibly be with. Oh my god. For the third time, this card has popped up in the same place. Oh my goodness. And I have shuffled this. All right. Nine of Pentacles under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme for you and many of you. Even in the other signs. So we have here the Four of Pentacles. Interesting here, this person does hold on to their beliefs in a very strong way. They feel like everything that they have done, everything that they have accomplished up until now, they feel that they're really confident about it. And the problem is sometimes you get this ego and pride because you know something or you have a certain belief about something. Sometimes if you have a belief about something, it doesn't mean you have ego and pride. It's just truly what you grew up with. Whatever it is, this person, for some of you, you may feel that they do have a lot of ego and they are not adjusting in any way. They don't want to change their ways, yet they're also not really conforming to the way you are. Here we have the lovers. They have a choice. 
between you and someone else or between you and something else. Something could be a job. It could be a job offer. It could be deciding on whether to separate from someone and become completely broke. Or still having that lifestyle and still trying to see you. It could be many, many things. But it's a choice here. Okay? There's a choice, and the choice doesn't have to be another person. It could be literally a type of an issue, a job, health-related, work-related. could be anything. Here we also have the Five of Swords. This person has realized that they want you by hook or by crook. They want to be the person who is victorious, and they want to they want to have you in their life. They want to be with you. It's actually a very beautiful card, but it talks a lot about competition. Ego-oriented competition. This competition right now in this card is not with you. I'm not seeing it to be with you. This is them feeling that you have a lot of suitors. You have a lot of other people that are liking you, and they don't want anybody to like you. They want you to alter themselves. Remember, this person's absolutely in love with you. Here we also have the Queen of Cups. With the Queen of Cups, this person realizes you are that type of individual who has a lot of love to give. This is unconditional love. This is pure love. This is true love. This is nurturing love. Taking care of someone. Now I hear someone saying, if they love me so much, and this person's bitter, I'm sorry. I understand why you're bitter. Um, you're asking the question here, if they love me so much, then why are they making a choice? Wouldn't I be their first choice? That means they don't love me. Life doesn't work like that. We have priorities that are detrimental to the way we live, our life, our existence. And we have to prioritize according to that. For you, love might be everything. For this person, they are able to prioritize their life versus love. Are you able to do that? We have to. We sometimes bend over backwards and we forget what we were truly doing in this connection. We just become somebody who's a provider or supplier. But do we ever think about anything else? We have to think about these things. Being in love doesn't just mean love is the one all be all thing. No, it doesn't happen like that. It's only a rare case where people say all we need is love doesn't work like that anymore. You need love and money. <laughs> and some people want love and money and respect. So respect not from you, but respect from the rest of the world, the rest of the society. What will the society say? If people discover somebody here is having an affair, what will the family say? What will the kids react like? So there's a whole bunch of problems that occur. It's not just when I say that it's a choice. It doesn't just mean it's a choice. A choice is not easy. The reason why the card came up is because the choice is very difficult. That's why it popped up. Otherwise, a person would have made it a choice. It would have been you. But it's a very big struggle for this person, whatever they're going through. You can either, either sympathize with them or you don't have to. But know that you are one of those people that they're willing to sacrifice something for. And the only reason they're doing this is because you do have here the Five of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. This combination tells me that you are somebody who has this aura around you. You may not feel like this, but this person sees you like this, that you are single and ready to mingle and you are the hottest thing around. People are just going to grab you and go and this person's going to be left behind. That scares them. That's why they want to be with you. That's why they're trying to make up their mind here with even the Five of Swords to win that competition because they realize how wonderful you are as a human being. They love that about you. We also have here with the Nine of Pentacles the feeling that in this connection they see you as somebody who has officially moved on. You don't care about this person anymore. That's what they feel. They feel that you now are more self-sufficient, more reliant on yourself. You don't need them. You don't need anybody. This to them seems very attractive. Usually this happens when you stop chasing somebody. 
it kind of triggers them all of a sudden. It's like, it's funny actually. I'm seeing two animals, like little animals. I don't even know what they are. Um, but they're running, four-legged creatures. They're running, they're furry. They're running and one is running and chasing after the other. And the one that's in the front, they just keep running and running and running. And they turn around to have a look. Oh, am I still being chased? And they realize, oh, nobody's chasing me anymore. Oh, it's a fox. Okay, it's a fox. It's like a wild fox. I mean, foxes are, are wild. It's a different type of fox, though. So it's turning around looking, and it realizes, oh, this other animal is no longer chasing me. And then it becomes curious becomes curious and then goes back on its tracks. I'm seeing it go back, uh, retracing its steps where it was running from, smelling the root, trying to discover where that, um, I guess they're the prey, right? Where the prey went. So the game is looking for the prey. I hope I'm saying that right. You guys know what I'm talking about. So this little fox is looking for the other animal that was hunting it. Now, why would they do that? Because they're curious. And that's what happens here. Someone here is chasing, chasing, chasing. Boom, you stop. You found something better. You decided to go in that little cave. Enjoy that fruit that you saw on the side. And now you're busy. Now you're doing something else. You're no longer interested in that other, that fox. But what happened here is this person now is coming back and they are wondering and they are worried, where did my Taurus go? Why are they no longer chasing me anymore? Why are we not in this connection anymore? Why aren't they texting me? Why do they look like they're happy? Are they happy without me? These are the type of questions and curiosity that's happening in this person's heart and in their mind. And that becomes a trigger. It motivates them. It's a fear now. It's like fear is a motivator. So they're afraid of losing you to somebody else. And there you have it, folks. That was like me watching National Geographic right now in my mind's eye. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> And I see it. It's like, um, there's like little rocks and there's a little fox that was going this way and then it starts coming back. But there's little rocks in the back, like a, like a, a platform kind of. And then on the bottom, there's just these big, long, tall grass, but the grass itself is like brown. So it's, for me, it would, I would call that like fall around fall time. I don't know. Maybe fall has something to do with you guys. Something happened in the fall. Maybe I don't see it. It's autumn. Let's have a look at what the angels have to say about this connection. All right. These messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. So here we have first card, the strongest, don't stop. So this talks about don't stop receiving and giving love. Keep that positive energy flowing. We have choose a new direction. <laughs> there was a lot of chasing involved, wasn't there, in that particular example I just said. Choose a new direction and look for a sign. Meditation brings answers. Followed by no. Okay, I want to just clarify the no. Oh, 
Okay. Now, some of you might have thought that this is going to happen sometime soon, but it's it does appear that it's going to take some time for this individual. Um, the main reason I say that is because you do have no, and then it says within the next few weeks, but next few weeks can also be months, just to, just to let you know. Okay. All right. So we have here, don't stop. Don't stop giving and receiving love in this connection. Even for yourself, don't stop giving and receiving love in general. Don't be bitter. You don't want that. Why? Because that's not you. Don't allow this person's influence to do this to you. Okay, that's not you. They are saying for you to choose a new direction, meaning choose a different method of approach. Remember, with the fox and whatever was chasing it, um, that direction just changed all of a sudden. A, a situation stopped and the situation changed. So here... It does talk about choose a new direction. So I do see that any type of method or approach that was being used before, um, that no longer is going to be the case. So things are going to change. There's going to be um, a situation that may completely uh, turn into something that you would hope for. However, the method of getting there will be different. So the destination is the same. The route and the road that you are going to choose will be different. Look for a sign. This could be literally signs and synchronicities. It could also be just the fact that this person literally says, I'm getting the word Haya. <laughs> wow, I haven't ever seen that one. I usually see H-E-Y, but now I'm seeing H-I-Y-A, Haya. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that means that this person is still very, very interested. Just remember, if this person reaches out to you, it's not because they are, they're just trying to play you like a fool now. No, no, no. They are actually in love with you. They're going to pretend like it's all cool. I'm fine. I don't have any problems. <laughs> I'm not obsessing over you. Um, yeah. People do a lot of crazy things when they're in love. Uh, but this person, they're going to pretend like everything's cool. Everything's fine. But the truth is on the inside, oh my goodness, it's like boiling. They're boiling. Here we also have meditation brings answers. So it is important for you to recollect yourself, start focusing on yourself, reevaluate what you want in life and how you want things. You can meditate. This can be, if you don't have time, my angel guide has told me, angel Fakiel has told me, 21 minutes is sufficient. We also have here um, to get your answer. So you can also pray. Praying can literally be two, three minutes, but mean it when you do it. Perfect timing. So the timing for what? To get more information. This all goes hand in hand. There is going to be information that you're going to be receiving. It's going to happen in due time, meaning divine timing, not the time that you think is right. No, it's not going to happen anytime soon. It will happen within the next few weeks or months. If you believe in this connection, that things will work out because it does have a lot of positive energy here. There's a lot of love coming from this person. And of course, guys, this is a general love reading, but I do hope this happens for everybody because I do see positive things coming through here for you because of the intense love that this person feels right in the beginning. There was tons of it. Holy smokes. This, this um, if you want to give them a second chance, that's fine. But I, I would say that this is the type of connection that is worth working towards and trying to see if it can work out again or can work out the first time because there is love here and the love is very genuine it's not something that's just phony baloney nope it's very genuine sexuality love sensuality right all those beautiful cards beautiful beauty um it's amazing this person really does feel that you are their special someone it's going to take them a while but it seems like you're going to have to allow them to come around. And in the meantime, you do your own thing. You just focus on something that you like doing, something that you haven't gotten a chance to do. In all honesty, when we get into a relationship, some of the things that we used to do, we put it on the back burner. But how about you use that time now, since you're free, to do something that you've always wanted to do. That'll make your heart happy. That'll make your soul happy, actually. 
It's almost like therapy, too. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated with you. And I did want to just announce I am still taking on some readings, which is my private readings. These are the written report readings. Those are still open. You can have a look at those on my website, www.asnointia.com. It's under the rates and packages section. All right, Taurus. Thank you so much. I will see you guys again. Bye now.